Welcome to the Word with Bishop Hannah. This is your day for a breakthrough. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and together let us bless his holy name. What a wonderful God we are serving. Can you imagine that today is the first Sunday in the year of our Lord, March 2022? What a good God we serve. He is a tremendous God, and we thank him for his faithfulness. And if God is faithful, we too should be faithful to him. If he is faithful to us, we should be faithful to him. God is intrinsically faithful. God cannot help himself but be faithful. We have to ask God to help us to be faithful. But he is naturally faithful. And so I thank God for his faithfulness. And I thank God for you, my brothers, my sisters, my viewing audience. I appreciate you so much and the partnership you are in this program. Well, today we want to talk on this topic I defy the negativity. I want to say it again. I defy the negativity. With each passing day, it seems as if life as we know it is becoming increasingly more challenging. It would appear as if everywhere you turn, there is a sad story. We see expressions of anger and rage on the streets as drivers and even to some extent pedestrians vent their annoyance at each other. Things are tense, to say the least. And there are those stories of doom and gloom that seemingly would not let up. As believers, we are not exempt from these occurrences. In fact, we operate in the same environment as do others who are so impacted. The negativity is palpable. It is everywhere. And it appears to be taking root in the lives of a large number of persons. There may be any number of reasons why this is happening. However, we can all agree that being negative is very taxing on the mind and time consuming on its impact on one's daily affairs. This is not God's way. Negativity, my brothers, my sisters, ladies and gentlemen, is not God's way. This is not healthy, and it is certainly no way to exist in a community. In his writing to the Philippians saints, the Apostle Paul laid out what I refer to as a road map for positivity in chapter 4 of the book bearing the same name. And here's what he says. I want to read a fairly lengthy passage, and then we will give some explanation to what we believe the Holy Spirit is saying to us. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. And here's Paul. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. I read for us Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. According to Google, to defy, D-E-F-Y, is to openly resist or refuse to obey. Consider this in relation to the passage read. At the outset, the writer encourages the reader to always 
rejoice in the Lord. The reality is that there are many situations where rejoicing may seem ill-advised. However, when we rejoice in the Lord, it is altogether different. God is our hope. Let me say that again for the sake of emphasis. God is our hope. And therefore, whatever we are confronted with, our trust in him gives us the, the assurance that he will bring us out. Aren't you happy today that when you are faced with the circumstances of life, you are not facing them alone as God's child? Aren't you happy that when the enemy or things in life stare you down in a menacing way, in an intimidating way, aren't you happy that there is a source, there is one that you can call on who is much stronger, much robust, much more robust than you and I, and this God is able to get in our situations and to calm the turbulence of our lives. I am thankful that this is the God we serve. To rejoice in the Lord is not an abstract thing. It is not something that is out there, a figmentation of our imagination. It is not something that is shrouded in mysticism. Absolutely not. Instead, to rejoice in the Lord is a fixed belief that God can be trusted and therefore we need not waste our time and energy on negativity. I'm speaking to someone. Let me say it again. To rejoice in the Lord is a fixed belief that God can be trusted and therefore we need not waste our time and energy on negativity. God is in control of all those things which concern his children. Therefore, we can live a practical life and not one that is fueled by speculation and uncertainty. I'm going to say that again also. Because, because our God is bigger than everything that comes against us, we can live a practical life and not one that is fueled by fear or speculation, certainly not by uncertainty. Get up in the morning and with God's help, face the day and get on with the business of living a practical life. Demystify what it is to be a child of God. Live a practical life and with God's help, face the day and get on with the business of living and living positively. Do not allow negativity to push you into a corner where life passes you by. God has given you too much to fritter away on fear and inaction. Get up and do something in Jesus' name. Here's the point. The point is simply this. There is so much negative vibes, as the young people would say, that is permeating the atmosphere that many people who want to do what is positive, who want to do what is productive and meaningful, they feel inhibited. They feel overwhelmed by all of this negative pressure that is coming at them. You turn on the radio, there's something negative permeating the airwaves. You turn on the television, there is something that is negative, that is, that is mind-boggling, that is happening somewhere in the world or even in your neighborhood. You go outside of your home and it seems as if the paranoia and everything else is becoming even more, more complicated for you to even survive by. You look at your resources and it seems as if even your resources are being threatened. What do we do as the children of God? We should not focus in on these things as real as they are, as tangible as they are, and as much as we and others may be impacted by them, there is a higher source for the, for in the life of the believer to, to ascribe to. And that person, that source is God. I want to talk to somebody this hour, and I want to tell you, stop being absorbed by your problems. Stop being absorbed by all of this negativity that is around. You can turn the television off. You can determine, I will not buy this publication. I will not watch this thing. I will not surf the net and look at what is negative. I will, I'm not being naive. I'm not being blissfully ignorant. But I am being intentional 
in what I allow to come into my spirit. I'm being intentional what I allow to enter my environment, my space, my orbit. I am being intentional in what I allow to be exposed or my children to be exposed to. Why? Because I am defying negativity. Praise you, Jesus. This is not positive thinking. This is not motivational preaching. But this is bringing the child of God in tune with the reality that God is bigger than those things you have to grapple with on a daily basis. The element of faith in God will give us the victory. There is a song that says faith and even a scripture that says faith is the victory. Even our faith will overcome the world. We have to believe in something. We have to sink our teeth in something that is worth it. And if you have Jesus Christ as Savior, I guarantee you, unequivocally so, that he is that person that can get you through the rough patches of life. The world should observe our moderation. And this word moderation in scripture comes from a Greek word, and it means gentleness. Do not be overly disturbed by what is going on. I am aware of what is going on in Ukraine. I am aware of what is happening in the world markets. I am aware that our leaders are telling us that gas prices, because, because of fuel prices going up elsewhere in the world, or oil prices going up elsewhere in the world, I am aware that it can impact me. But if I am not focusing on God, I am going to get sick with worry. I am going to get sick with, with stress. I am going to become depressed. And the one who I should be looking to, who is, me, who is the author and the finisher of my faith and my salvation, I am going to deny him. And I am going to allow these problems to overwhelm me. I am saying to us, no, no, no. There is another reality as the children of God we can tune into. And that reality is that God is on our side. And I thank God for God. I thank God for the promises of his word. I thank God for what he does for his children, that even when our backs are pressed against the wall, God comes through for us. I'm speaking to someone right now. You remember when you didn't have enough money to pay your bills. You remember when it seemed as if things were coming at you, all of a sudden, a great calm came over. And it came from the presence of the Lord. I go back to my script and it says, the world should be able to observe our moderation, our gentleness. The coming of the Lord is nigh at hand. And those who proclaim the name of Jesus need to live in a posture that proclaims our relationship with God. You don't have to hurt yourself. You don't have to get drunk. You don't have to use drugs or any stimulant or stimuli. You can serve God and watch God come through for you. Bless the Lord. The world needs to see this manifested before its very eyes. Negativity brings on worry and anxiety. It isolates and diminishes the individual to whom it is attached. Walk away from those who are constantly breathing out negativity. Got your friendship list. Hallelujah. Instead, take on the positive and project it wherever you go. Some men may want to know why you seem to be so happy. Why you seem to be completely at, at odds with what is going on around you. It's because you're tuned into a different frequency. You're believing God in his word. Get in the habit of speaking to God about the things that bother you. And be careful how you speak to some of the people when you have your problems. Some of the people in your church in your community, in your family, because as soon as you are done speaking with them, they pick up the phone and they tell somebody else what you're going through. Child of God, learn to be in constant contact with God. Learn to allow the Holy Spirit to hear what you have to say and allow the Holy Spirit to influence the decisions and the thought processes that will cause you to make the right and positive moves in every endeavor, in every area of your life. In those instances where the Spirit of the Lord is leading you to seek the intervention of others, then you go and you seek the intervention of those that God will guide you to in His will. Shy away from those who can only tell you of darkness, gloom, and doom. And in the Bahamas, we have too many of these people. Praise you, Jesus. 
I'm in the devil's territory now. Too many of these people, all they can prophesy is blackness, darkness. The nation is going to hell on a skateboard coming down a hill. Oh, praise God. Help us, Lord. Do not fellowship with those who always have a word that puts you and others down. I need to know. You need to know. We need to know that God can lift us up despite everything else that is going on around us to the contrary. Many persons who say that they have a word from the Lord are not sincere. And they do not have any word from the Lord. And they certainly do not have any word for you from the Lord. Get to know God for yourself. Stop listening to some of these charlatans. They have no word. They have no anointing. They have nothing. They've been nowhere near God. I told you I'm in the devil's territory now. Be careful what and who you open your spirit to, my brother, my sister. Especially if you are vulnerable. Especially if you are down and out. That hand that reaches out to you may not be a hand that is being led by God or the power of God. These people operate in the flesh. And they take advantage of your fear and your ignorance. Do not fall for the lies that are usually filled with bad theology and human emotions. If you lift a scripture from, if you lift a passage from the Bible, it should be able, after you explain it, it should be able to fit right back where you took it from. If you lift a passage from the scripture, and you do cross-reference on it. If you do a word study on a particular word or a group of words, a clause, a phrase, it should be able to fit right back in the passage where it came from. When you, when you do cross-references in Scripture, nothing should run counter to the other. I say it again. Do not fall for the lies because many of these so-called prophecies are filled with bad theology and human emotions. This is not what God wants for us. He has given us the ministry of reconciliation. It is to bring people back to God. It is to bring people back to where God would have them to be. We ought to be in the forefront of leading people to Jesus with the gospel of Christ and not with negative news. Praise you, Jesus. I'm already strong on drugs. I already have other addictions. I am already suffering from low self-esteem. I'm already flat out at the bottom of life. And all you can tell me is something negative. Why should I drop these vices and follow you or follow the God you proclaim? Tell me that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Tell me that the wages of sin is death, but also tell me that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Tell me something that would cause me to know that there is something better than my current reality, than my current state. I'm speaking to someone right now in the hidden recesses of your mind. You are at your wit's end. You don't know where to turn because everywhere you go, everywhere you look, it's bad news, one piece after the other. I am telling you that God has good news for you. And the news is that God wants to save you. He wants to, he wants to rescue you from the cesspool of life. He wants to clean you up and he wants to show you to the world that if you're in Christ Jesus, the old things have been passed away, have been expunged from the record, and that you are now a new creation in Christ Jesus. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Here's what Jesus said about you and me in Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. Ye are the light of the world. Nothing negative about a light in this, in this context. Jesus continues, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. In other words, he is saying that as believers in Christ, God has created and created us in such a way that he can propel us to the top so that people can see the advantages and the benefits of being a new creation 
in Christ Jesus. I go on a little further. Jesus continuing. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it give it light unto all that are in the house. This gospel, oh, praise you, Jesus. This gospel is one that should be shared. This gospel is one that should be promulgated wherever you are. You need to know, if you're sitting on the lofty hills of life, you need Jesus Christ. But if you are down at the crusty bottom of life also, you need Jesus Christ. He can change the dynamics of your life and he can make you a new person. Stop feeding off this negative thing. Stop believing that you are nothing. Stop believing that you can't change. Stop letting people speak into your spirit. These damnable words that are intended to destroy you, your psyche, your emotions, your self-esteem. Listen to what God says. Listen, I said to you again, he says, ye are the light of the world. Of course he was speaking to Christians. But if they could be changed by then, and if people like me and others can be changed in the contemporary environment, God can change you. I go a little further. And so here's Jesus now projecting the posit positivity. He says, let your light shine before men that they, who they, men in your community, Good men, bad men, white men, black men, learned men, unlearned men, whomever they may be, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I tell you, look negativity in the face and defy it. Refuse to accept it. Let your mind reflect on those things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and of a good report. This may mean dropping certain friends. But if that's the case, drop them in the name of Jesus Christ. It may mean ceasing certain, certain activities. If that's the case, then you cease and desist. It may also mean not reading certain publications. Whatever it is, you do it in Jesus' name. Whether they are online or the traditional book, whatever it is that is damaging your spirit, drop it in Jesus' name. Remember that words create a picture in a person's mind. And pictures in the mind can create feelings in the body. It is what you allow to come through the eye gate, the air gate. It is also what you consume into your body. Thank you, Jesus. God wants us to trust in his power and his ability to provide those things for us that we will not otherwise possess if we go the route of negativism. I call on you to make a decision to change your way of thinking and behaving and tune into God's frequency. Hear what he has to say. Listen to this. Here's what he has to say in his word and then do it. Here's what the Bible says in Titus 1.15. Unto the pure, all things are pure. No innuendo, no funny thoughts, no funny thinking. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They fill themselves so much with the negative stuff of life that every time they open their mouth, it comes from, from, a, from a, a defiled mind. And what's in the mind, what's in the heart is verbalized when the speech is made. I encourage you today to look at this word again. Look at your situation. Avoid those negative people. Avoid those negative situations. Even in the workplace, you're trying to work hard and to do what you've been hired to do. But some negative person who is bitter with the government, bitter with, the, bitter with, your, with your company, bitter with this one and bitter with the next one, they're trying to damage your spirit and make you less productive than what you ought to be. I don't know why you're doing all of this. They don't care about you anyhow. I rebuke that wicked and evil and pernicious spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You in the home, trying your best to be the best person that God has created you to be. And someone right in the home is feeding negativity into your psyche and into your spirit. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus Christ. Push against it in the name of Jesus Christ. I tell you again, Titus 1.15, unto the pure, 
all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. That's how they live. That's who they are. Fill your inner man with the word of God. Read God's word daily or as much as possible. Here's what Psalm 119 and verse 130 says. The entrance of thy words give it light. It give it understanding unto the simple. You don't have to be deep. You don't have to be profound. You don't even have to be eloquent. The entrance of thy words give it light. Light here is understanding. Light here is clarity. Light here is to be able to, to perceive and to see and to appreciate what God is saying. And the psalmist says, the entrance of God's word into our lives gives us this illumination. It shines the light on our darkened understanding. And then the same psalm says, that's Psalm 119, verse 165, great peace, listen to it, great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. So, let's go on. I have a list here, and I hope I can get through all of this list, but I want you to think about these things as we wind down uh, this, this, this time of, of being together. Number one, remain in the company of those who will lift your spirit. These are things to consider when it comes to ridding yourself of this spirit of negativity, of defying negativity. Remain in the company of those who will lift up your spirit. These negative people, stay away from them. Stay away from them. I'm not going out to dinner with you. I'm not going out to the fish fry with you. I'm not going out to barbecue ramp with you. I am not going to, I'm not going anywhere with you. I'm not angry with you, but I'm trying to preserve what God is doing in my life. Number two, avoid persons whose sole ambition is to saddle you with problems and negativity. Can't you tell me one day that the skies are blue? Can't you tell me one day that it's not going to rain? Can't you tell me something that would that would speak positively about someone else? Can't you do that? Number three, be alert to those who only seek you out when they have something negative to say. Charlotte, I got this hot piece. I had to call you because I know you want to hear this. It damages your spirit, man or woman of God. Number four, choose friends who are less likely to complain and to be critical of others. Remember, we are our friends, and our friends are us. And so if you're hanging and running with this group of people who are always down and negative and nasty at times in their pronunciations or their pronouncements, you are going to be damaged by them. Number five, when in situations where you cannot leave because you know you may be you may be in an office environment. Then in situations where you cannot leave, make it clear that you are not interested in negative talks. And some people say, "Well, I'm there, but I say nothing." Make it clear, I'm not going down that road with you. We have just a few more minutes. Number six, cherish your times of prayer, praise, and proclamation. Go to church and get a word from the Lord. Hallelujah! When it comes time to pray, ring on the prayer bells of heaven and allow God to speak with you. When it comes time to praise God and to exalt the name of Jesus Christ, do it robustly. Do it enthusiastically. Let everything that hath bread, the psalmist says, praise the Lord. This is what I offer you. Let me go real quickly. Number seven, look for the bright side of every negative situation if there is one to be had. Number eight, refuse the temptation to be judgmental of others. Be willing to give others the benefit of the doubt. Number nine, be more forgiving and less condemning of others. Remember, remember today, it is him. Tomorrow it can be you. And the scripture says, in fact, Paul says to the Galatian saints, he says, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering your own self, because you too can be tempted. We all have feet of clay outside of God. Be careful. Number 10, listen to what God has to say about you and his word. There you will discover that negativity 
is not a part of his plan for your life. That's why God sent Jesus Christ to turn your situation around. Number 11, be more reflective of the goodness of God and indeed be more expressive of the goodness of God. Number 12, consult God and his word for all decisions. All. Number 13, as we wind down, avoid those who avoid God. Can I say it again? That sounds quotable. Avoid those who avoid God. That is to say, those persons that do not have any regard for God are not likely to be of any real help to you as a Christian and in your general well-being. Are you better than people? No. Should you be arrogant? God forbid. But those persons who do not have Jesus Christ as their reference point, avoid them. You don't need to have an intimate friendship with them. You don't need to have tea with them. You lift up Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ says, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Shall we pray, Father, in the mighty and matchless name of your Son, Jesus Christ, O oh God, I thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, Lord, for the militancy of your word and the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, because there is no area in our human endeavor, Lord, where you will not penetrate and speak to man to mankind. And so I pray today, Lord, that this word will touch the core of persons, Lord, who are wrestling with this negativity and that they will defy it in the name of Jesus Christ and that they will only speak those things that you will have them to speak. I pray for the person, Lord, who is in the doldrums of life, Lord. Give them, give them the comforting assurance that you are the friend who is closer than the brother. I pray, Lord, for the person who does not know Jesus Christ as Savior, that even now, Lord, they will surrender completely to you and that their lives will be changed. Indeed, old things, all things will be passed away and old things will become new. Thank you, Father, again. Thank you, Son, and thank you, blessed Holy Spirit. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray and we declare. Amen. We will not allow negativity to be our dictator, but we will allow the Holy Spirit to be our leader. God bless you. God keep you today. I'm Bishop Yulin A. Hannah. I love you. And again, God is on your side. Defy negativity.